Hi friends, welcome to WizBusters. I'm Emma and today I'm going to show you how to use the HLOOKUP function with examples in Google Sheets and Excel. When we have a table that is organized into horizontal rows like this, we can use the HLOOKUP function to search for a value in the first row and return a value from a cell specified in the column of the searched value in the first row. What does the function return? Well, the function returns a value from the table that matches the value you looked up. We need to tell Google Sheets or Excel four things. One, what do we want to look up or search for? Two, where do we want to look for this? Three, in which row is the value? And four, do we want an exact match for the lookup? These are the four parameters in the HLOOKUP function. In Google Sheets, you will see equal HLOOKUP, search key, range, index is sorted. While in Excel, you'll see equal HLOOKUP, lookup value, table array, row index num, range lookup. So let's take a look at an example. Before we begin, to stay updated with new videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified of the latest videos out. Suppose you are ordering snacks for your two teams, Team A and Team B. This table is organized horizontally, where the items are in row 1 and the price are in row 2. The two tables below show the orders made by each team. We want to calculate the total cost for each team in the tables below. To do this, we can use the HLOOKUP function. So we type in equal HLOOKUP, open parenthesis, and recall that we have four parameters. The first parameter is asking, what do we want to look up or search for? We want to look up the item Frappuccino, which is in this cell. So we click this cell to reference our lookup value. The second parameter is asking where or in what range do we want to look for this item? Well, we want to search for it in this table, so we select this table. Now, one thing I'd like to point out here is that for each lookup to work, the lookup value must be in the first row of the range in which you select. So notice Frappuccino is in the first row in the range of table we selected. Another point here is that it is best practice to make this an absolute reference. So you can do that by either pressing the F4 key for a desktop or function plus F4 keys in the laptop or smaller devices. I'll explain further why we should do this in the next video about common errors to avoid when using HLOOKUP. The third parameter is index and this is asking what is the row number in which the value that we want is located. And in the range of cells that we selected, so the price is in the second row. So we put the number two here as the third parameter. Finally, the fourth parameter is asking, do you want to match the lookup exactly? Yes, we want the lookup value to be an exact match. So because of this, we type in false here. The values for this parameter can be true or false. True is the default value and means approximate match, while false means to find an exact match. Now we close the parenthesis and press enter. Notice that we got 399 in return. When we check it on the table, the answer is 399. So the value is correct. We autofilled this and notice the formula gave us $4.50 for pi. And if we look at it here, pi is $4.50 at the unit price. Let's also use the H lookup for the second table. We can copy the same formula and paste it into the cells C11 to C13. But we will try using the HLOOKUP function again as another demonstration example before we do that. So we type in equal HLOOKUP, open parenthesis. The first parameter is asking what do we want to search for or look up? We want to look up latte, which is in this cell. We click the cell to reference our lookup value. The second parameter is asking where or in what range do we want to look for this item? Well, we want to search for it in this table. So we choose this table, A1 to E2, and we make it an absolute reference. 
The third parameter is index, and this is asking what is the row number in which the value that we want is located. So we know that the price is in row number two, so we type in two. And we want an exact match, so we type in false in as our fourth parameter. We close the parenthesis, we press enter, and we autofill. Let's delete that. Now, notice that we've got $2.99 for latte, which is the same here, $2.50 for croissant, and $4.50 for pie, and these match up. So let's calculate the total for the team. Let's suppose there were six and six, and here there were six, two, and four. So let's multiply the quantity by the unit price. And we drag this down for here, and the total would be the sum of these two. We can copy this formula and paste it in here. Copy paste, if you just click in, you'll notice that it does multiply the quantity by the unit price. And we sum these three. We've got $50.94 for team A and $40.94 for team B. So now that you know how to use the function, I wanted to touch on some other important points about this function. Please look at the next video for more details about common errors to avoid when using HLOOKUP. In this video, I will highlight some points about this function. Firstly, the lookup value must be in the first row of the range which you are searching. So we pointed that out in our example. This means that when you choose your range of values, ensure that the lookup value is in the first row in your range. Frappuccino was in row one. Secondly, the function retrieves data from rows below the lookup value. The way HLOOKUP works is that it finds the lookup value from the first row of the range selected, then searches to the bottom of the row and counts the number of rows from there to retrieve the value from the corresponding row in the index parameter. The third thing is that the data must be organized horizontally, as shown here. The fourth point to note is that the HLOOKUP function returns the value of the first match of the lookup value. In a situation where there are multiple columns in the first row with the same value as the lookup value, the HLOOKUP function will return the corresponding value for the first match it finds. To get a hang of these important points in more detail and more, take a look at the next video about errors to avoid when using the HLOOKUP function as these videos have examples associated with it for these errors. Thank you for watching this video and hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this and hit the bell to get notifications of the latest videos out. See you in the next video.